Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Shark here with a 2v2 for you today on day 101, which is one of my favorite 2v2 maps. Playing as the Axis, we have two Wehrmacht players, Walrus from the UK, ranked number 75, using the Mechanized Battle Group, and his buddy War, longtime teammate from the Philippines, ranked number 118 with the Wehrmacht, using the Italian Coastal Battle Group. And then as the Allies, we have Rolling Nine Deep from the USA, ranked number 258, playing the Brit Armor Battle Group. And Barry Chuckle from the UK, ranked number 68 with the US, playing the Advanced Infantry Battle Group. Casting this one with me is my buddy Garrett from the channel Turtle War. Link to his channel down in the description below. He posts a lot of his own gameplay and first person view content. This match is kind of fun. It definitely goes the distance. And it features what I like to imagine is Coastal Reserve gameplay done right without being cancerous. So no need for chemo after this one. Anyway, that's all. Hope you enjoy and we'll roll on to the match. Snappy. All right. So what we got right now on the east side of the map, kind of bottom right of the screen, we've got Barry Chuckle in red playing as the Americans. And then over here, his teammate in purple rolling nine deep playing as the Brits. Right. Uh, and then on the opposite side, both Wehrmacht players, we got Walrus in blue and War in teal slash yellow, depending on if you're looking at the overlay. Uh, day 101. So... Garrett, uh, talk me through your approach to this map. I, I think it's a pretty well-balanced 2v2 map, but I'd like to hear how you feel about things and what you think. Uh, it depends on, on what the faction I'm playing, but if I'm allies, usually I, I like to take it a lot more slow and wait until I have you know one or two units out and then go to that middle fuel and try to flank it. Because especially against Wehrmacht, I'm expecting the first thing I'm going to see up there is a MG42, which they actually don't have. Mm -hmm. Which is surprising, and if I'm at, or if I'm Axis, I'm going to do that. I'm going to get an MG42 up there, ASAP, put it in the heavy cover, uh, try to get some units around to cover the flank, and maybe get you know if you got a cat in or if you're uh, DAC, get your crowd shoots in on the heavy fuel on the medium fuel. Yeah, well, those MG42s just popped. Uh, Walrus went for three Pioneers, which I think is interesting. Um, that sandbag, the positioning's good because the sappers basically can't get into green cover. So they're going to hop into the building instead. Dingo out, which is a good natural predator targeting the uh, MG42. But uh, War also has... Uh, he's got a Grenadier squad out, which is a decent counter. I've noticed since the update, Grens do a lot more damage to Dingoes. They're not as powerful as they used to be. Yeah, that DPS will translate directly. Although, uh, honestly, it shouldn't, because if it was accuracy-based, the target size is much larger. And honestly, I just realized something. Walrus is in teal, and War is in blue, so it's War with the three pioneers. The overlay down here lied to me with the colors. So, um, no, I, I would never criticize you, Zany. This overlay is amazing. Um, <laughs> No, but I, I, I agree with you. This uh, fuel here, this plus 10, tends to drive a lot of the early engagements. Um, I have found some success in focusing on playing with my teammate here in the middle rather than focusing, especially in the city up top. Um, you know, it has a couple of those plus 10 munis. It's got some fuel on the flanks. Uh, but I think if you don't overcommit to it, and only one player from your opponent is, is playing the center of the map, you can get some really beneficial engagements. Ooh. Uh, one squad of Pioneers goes down here. War only playing with Pyos and MG42s, a single MG42, and he's floating a lot of manpower. So I wonder if we're going to see like a Jaeger heavy build uh, here as he techs up. Yeah, this is kind of a exercise in futility here. You got the sappers in cover at range shooting an MG42 in Grenz. I think the Grenz will eventually whittle them down, but uh, the MG42 is not going to do much damage either. Now, nah, there they go. They're forced to retreat. And I... Walrus is sending his Pyos to cap the Muni on the side and the star point, but still, I mean, I'd be sending that to that fuel... Uh, first yeah so war has got the luftwaffe company on the way walrus went for the panzer green and deer company he already has a squad of pgrens out oh war instead going coastals and he's got the artillery wizard out on the field 
So interesting that he would go with pioneers uh, instead of the coastals. I actually find the coastals to be pretty powerful in this patch uh, with their increased accuracy. As long as you keep them in cover, their rifles do a lot of damage uh, and then combined with the bunkers, they can be... Maybe they're not tough for good players to deal with, but they're tough for me to deal with. Now you finally see rolling nine deep, uh, capping up the south side of the map here, as the Axis make a concerted push onto this fuel point. These pioneers are going to get saved by the suppression uh, from the MG42, and then another little flood of pioneers comes in. Of the Vickers. Vickers to catch it. Beautiful, oh, beautiful man. Vickers positioning on the flank. And then a great flank by Barry. Yeah, I, I like this with the rifle push. The artillery officer comes in, but he's actually going to get bled quite a bit if he stands still. And yeah, now that MG's cleared his uh, bombardment area, yep, he retreats. So the ally is able to hold on to this fuel even as the Pegrens advance. Good flank with the pioneers, do some damage, but don't can't really threaten the dingo. Yeah, and it looks like the Axis players are now determined to take this fuel. Dingo artillery barrage coming in, and it keeps the pioneers from capping. So the allies again holding on to the central fuel. Meanwhile, uh, Barry doing a good job of capping up uh, in the city here to get a munitions advantage for his team, uh, and rolling nine deep, kind of recovering munitions on the south side of the map. So allies uh, in a good early spot here, especially with fuel control. You see a Humber coming and uh, a motor pool and medical. Oh my. Uh, Those Grens sitting on the medium fuel are getting annihilated by that artillery. Yeah, if only uh, the uh, the old satchel, the howitzer was still in play, they'd probably be dead. <laughs> so it looks like Barry Chuckle's gonna go with the Rangers. He picked the ISC, he's got the frontline med station. Meanwhile, I love to see this. This is the forward med bunker for war, right? And so the advantage in this over the traditional med tech for Vermont is you get the casualty clearing, right? Which, you know, medics go out, they grab casualties, and so you occasionally get a free reinforcement. So smart play, useful for his teammate to, to heal on the way out. Uh, and then the added benefit is some free reinforcements, which make the coastals even more uh, abusive and, and toxic to play against. Just kidding, War. You know I love you. <laughs> Flag 30 out now. Um, and so I think that's a, a good idea against the Humber. It's going to discourage, like, Humber spam because the pen on the Flag 30, yeah. It whittles it, it down. If, look at that. It does a surprising amount of damage. It always blows my mind how, how fast it whittles down the Humber. Yeah, no recce artillery coming in, so that Flag 30 is forced to retreat. I mean, it's it's a good all-around weapon. It'll do some suppression here to the American infantry that are pushing on the flank, as well as decent damage, but you can't just easily push it off with, like, vehicles. And I don't know if the Axis have any indication that Barry's gone Rangers, but especially in the current patch, um, I mean, they've seen the captain, so they know it's not in that kind of support center, but the Greyhounds and the Chaffees are still very, very good. So when I'm playing against Americans, I usually, like, I'm concerned about having some good anti-light vehicle. Whether it's Grens, whether it's a flak or an AT gun, etc. Well, P-Grens combined with Grenadiers and V-42 uh, do a lot of work to that Vickers. Americans pushing back up through the middle here. And this is where, especially in this current patch, um, I think you really got to be cautious about, you know, leaving your infantry out in the open. Like, that push would have been really effective pretty on its shark. I think now that you have to constantly kind of balance your infantry units to and from cover, or they're going to get bled by the opponent. It's, it's, it's so tough, because you can blob up, and as long as you have good enough micro to keep that blob mostly in cover you'll shred, you'll just tear through infantry. 
Yeah, but I mean, like, blobbing in cover is, is like, actual infantry tactics. Blobbing in the open is just poor micro. Yeah. <laughs> you know? All right, here we go. Here's the whirlwind. So the build from Walrus looks like it's going to be that mechanized build. Eight rods, Panzer Grenadiers, probably into a pack wall. And then meanwhile, War playing a combination of Coastals. Uh, and then Luftwaffe Company Heavy with the Warble Wind. Um, no Jaegers out, so I wonder what his long-term approach to uh, anti-armor is going to be. Maybe he's going to rely on Walrus uh, for some packs. And actually, the ally is still in a great spot. They're at 500 VPs. And they've got the Axis down to 345. So, uh, and they had that fuel for a long time. Here we see Rolling Nine Deeps. Already he's got his tier four coming out. A couple of AT guns out for Barry Chuckle. So uh, this has the potential uh, to still roll the allies way, even though both of the Axis players playing pretty powerful, uh, relatively meta builds here. Oh wait, <laughs> Rolling Deep putting up a, a MG nest on the bottom point. Well, the Pioneers I get... Don't think Annihilated yeah, or engineered. He's not going to be able to finish that. <laughs> and now the eight rod uh, with some Pigren support. Eight rod going to get challenged by the Humber here. I think one on one, especially the Wehrmacht eight rod, loses to the Humber. Panzer Grenadier is not going to be much help. Now the DAC eight rod with the armor battle group and some of the upgrades will eat the Humber up. Ooh, good oh. positioning from the AT gun. No follow up shot though. Smoke. So the eight rod will escape. Great. Great use of smoke. Yeah. Meanwhile, Great Werbel, reaction. Werbel wind burns down a scout squad here. And so Barry's got his two AT guns, but he needs to get them up to the front, and this Werbel wind's going to continue to bleed his infantry pretty heavily. No Rangers out yet as well. He's got the commander, but not any of those units. And the longer you wait to get Rangers out, the less value they provide. But allies, they've got that middle fuel. They've got two of the VPs. Uh, Axis team now down to uh, almost uh, 250. Rolling deep is floating. He just had over a thousand manpower. Now he's getting out foot guards and a Matilda. He still has over 400 manpower. So I'm not sure if he's waiting to get out. He's he's been floating for a while. Is what I'm getting at. Yeah. I, so there might be a power spike soon. I feel like he should put a cache on this plus five uh, fuel point here by his buddy's med tent and then enable the forward retreat. Um, it would save him a little bit of time and allow him to get healing from the other uh, the med facility. BAR is on the rifles for Barry Chuckle, so I actually don't think we're going to see rangers from him here. Ooh, artillery officer annihilated by the Greyhound. You'd love to see it. I'm sorry, I'll always be happy about Coastals getting annihilated. Here comes the Pigrens. They do get suppressed by the Vickers, and the Vickers is going to back up. Oh, nice layer with the, uh, the MG bunker here. Suppresses the other Pigrens as they go to throw a grenade. Ooh. Well, that Vickers P got annihilated. Nice. Oh. I really thought it would do more damage than that. Yeah, I got scared. <laughs> Man, these Pigrens are doing work, and I think you actually see... Oh, here come the boys, the assault group from uh, from Barry Chuckle. <laughs> Combined with the Matilda. So this is actually a pretty dangerous push here. The Pigrens have no counter to this. Yeah, um, Walrus very light on AT. Yeah, he, instead he's got a naval warfare. Now he's getting his first pack 40 out. Here comes the Nabel, and if he won't... Oh, it's a little bit deep. Ideally, you use, uh, you use this boys' assault to farm some better to see. Matilda hammers MU-42 and forces a retreat. And actually, Matilda... They could take down the Werble here if the Matilda gets aggressive. Oh, the Zooks do a ton of damage to the Werble win. Wow, Barry is floating a ton of resources. He's building an ammo bunker. I wonder if he's prepping for the uh, the howitzer to go back there. 
You know, I don't, I don't know about you, I've, I've rarely used the ammo bunker, but it is odd to build that, in my opinion, first, before you have something <laughs> to pair it with. The only thing I can think is that he's short uh, a command point. Oh, here we go. Rolling deep with the, the artillery cover, the recon artillery. I don't think it's going to knock out this command bunker, but it will dissuade War from keeping his units in the circle there. The Robo and the Flak 30 do a good job of knocking out the airplane, and so that, that loiter's uh, kind of banished. And here we're seeing the change in the patch to the Pegrens doing better damage at range uh, with their STGs. Although the, the foot guards still don't actually lose a model, they just take a bunch of damage. Oh, so he's putting up a mortar pit around this ammo. Oh my god, that Matilda's been buttoned by the Flak 30. Oh, he just barely gets out of there. Yeah, and here comes a martyr. Oh, attack round misses somehow. Must have been the elevation change. Here comes uh, here come the, the boys try to provide some cover, and the Matilda's going to get out of there thanks to the smoke and the infantry assault cover here. Oh, but at this point, with the defensive artillery from the bunker, just far- Oh, and the naval warfare are coming in, and these guys are going to get annihilated and just feed the KD ratio and some veteran seeds to the naval warfare. So big push here in the center. So both teams, uh, like we talked about earlier in the game, you've got a little bit of walrus or war um, pushing through the city with a Ketan crowd of pioneers, but everyone's really focused here on the center. And I think this is the Axis players recognizing they're severely behind on VPs. Oh, that MG42. Flanking maneuver from the captain. And they're able to get on the MG42's flank. Well, they. Yeah, it's done. So nice pickup there. For the American player, and now AT guns move up to get after this command bunker. No real counters to this. The AT guns are able to walk up with oh, that rifle squad. Survives. Man, uh, rolling deep has actually lost quite a bit. He's down to. Uh, he's he refunded one Matilda to build another one, which is hilarious. He had refunded it because it probably would take so long to repair it, but also it had been spinning in the base. It had some pathing issues on yeah. that uh, refund. It was it, just spinning back there having a blast. Yeah. Uh, his infantry, I only remember him building one infantry section, but it is not here anymore. He said he's got two foot guards, a sapper, a mortar, and a, and a vickers, as well as a couple of bunkers kind of in the rear, providing some protection against flanks. Oh, we've seen a mortar pit from Barry Chuckle. That's what's there for the ammunition storage. Yeah, I mean, he could spam those or he could end up building. God, he's floating so many resources. Here comes another infantry assault. Oh, Matilda almost eliminates the Gren squad in one shot. And the Allies trying to dig in here with some artillery. Oh, beautiful smoke to cover the boys. Mm -hmm. That gets them in nice and close. Now, a bundle grenade there does a lot of damage, and the Pegrin's just gonna eat this up. So now we see a second Matilda out. And then the tank retaining. Here comes a Brumbear. Oh, God. Is that an Obiche? It is. Oh, where did... Targeting and that it's... ammo bunker. Now, the ammo bunker doesn't have the catastrophic explosion that it did when that battle group first came out. Uh, so, it's kind of unfortunate. I, I really like the risk reward nature of that. Man, Axis artillery coming in, doing a lot of work. Brumbear pushing. Uh, a couple of Matildas are going to try to force off the Brumbear. There's a Pack 40 in the rear, though. There... Yeah, there we go. Matildas might not penetrate the Brumbear, but the Pack 40 will absolutely penetrate the Matildas. I say that as it bounces a shot, so 
Maybe never mind. <laughs> now a martyr rotating over. Foot guards pushing up through the middle and more artillery coming in from both sides. Oh, Brumbarg is stunned. Yeah, but the foot guards took a lot of damage there. Obviously a lot going on here. Brumbear taking a ton of damage. More bazookas come in from the foot guards. Oh, follow-up shot from the AT guns at range knocks it out. That's a huge loss for the Axis here. We're facing this uh, really, really aggressive infantry push. Oh man, I just now looked at Walrus's munitions. He has 400 plus. I'm not wait. sure if he's waiting for something. Or... So he went the mechanized battle group. So he can either use uh, his final abilities are mechanized assault or zeroing artillery. Zeroing artillery onto this uh, medic tent would be amazing. Yeah, and these Pegrans are just going to bleed manpower in front of these two Matildas. Oh, here's the Abiche. Mortar pit is gone. A second ammunition storage is popping up. Slightly left of the bed tent. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, now you've got the, uh, the British artillery emplacement set up as well. Or no, that's the M2A1 howitzer. Okay. Yeah, that uh, with free fire drills, especially once it gets to vet one with the charged shells, it's going to start causing all kinds of havoc to these Vermont team weapons. So is he targeting immediately the Obiche? Let's see. I can't tell where his shells are landing. I haven't seen it yet. Foot guards push off the pack 40. Naval warfare looks like it's going to move up for a barrage. Here is it setting up. Grenadier is trying to cover from the foot guard advance. Matilda's following. Let's see where the naval comes in. It looks like the naval's targeting the howitzer. Does decent damage. But the at this range the scatter is pretty extreme. Meanwhile, the howitzer bombarding the med bunker back here. Oh. Horrible wind goes down. Man, the allies have such a significant VP advantage here. And to be honest, I don't know what the approach is here for the Axis players. You see a Panther coming out. Panther, it'd be a decent counter to these Matildas, but there's so much infantry on the field for the allies. Uh, maybe they're going to have to rely on, you know, precision artillery. The Obiche, only a handful of shells per round, so it's devastating when it hits. And the allies are about to again get the VP advantage here. A couple of engineers capping up in the city. Here comes a Kettenkrod scouting out. There you go, that makes sense because they want to call in some artillery here. Oh, here's some heavy already coming in. This looks like zeroing already. Oh man! And it knocks out the howitzer despite being kind of off center. The howitzer completely destroyed, not recruitable or repairable. A good use of the zeroing artillery. It's funny, I normally prefer the mechanized assault. Uh, ability for this battle group, but I think in this context with all the artillery the allies are trying to use The zeroing artillery makes a lot of sense With how much of a gridlock it's been in the middle. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it makes sense. The Obiche hits the uh, Med tent here and takes two rifle squads down to just a couple of models One more shell should come in here shortly Ammo storage goes down, but the med tent still remains Matilda, oh, this foot guard squad will will get away just fine. Panther could push here, and now that eight rod can cap, so that is the uh, the chance for the Axis to get back in this game. 
Panther forces one Matilda back, but now there's an AT gun in place. And so the Panther forced to back up a risk dying. And now the Axis is going to respond, Kettencrod capping up in the city. So it looks like we'll see a, a brief triple cap for the Axis uh, as the uh, the boys show up again here in the center. They're immediately going to get suppressed by the 742. Naval work are now coming in on the repair station. I actually like the use of the repair station. When you've got two Matildas out, they take so long to repair. Uh, it makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, Barry getting yet another howitzer out. Panther is squaring off against two Matildas here in the south. It'll be fine as long as that AT gun stays decrewed. Oh, but it's picked up by the sappers and the Panther's forced to back up. Obiche still barraging. Yeah, I, I think you're right, Garrett. I think they need to focus on this Obiche with their other artillery. Oh, Pigran's going to clear this Vickers. Egrens versus engineers in the uh, the city there. So war upgraded to some Panzer Grenadiers, and they'll hold the city. So the Axe is going to maintain a slight VP advantage for now. I think what we're seeing is a combined uh, Bishop and M2A1 Howitzer barrage. But I think that Howitzer is about to get destroyed yeah. again. Well, so he was building a second one, and then he saw the Egrens advance and call in the uh, Zero and Hardy. There we go. Another house to destroy. That's a lot of resources. It's 400 manpower and I think 75 fuel. So it is not trivial that uh, they're able to continue to destroy those howitzers. You know, Pioneer's working on keeping that Obiche running pretty much full time. And then you see the Flak 30 set up next to it, which I presume is to provide anti-air support. Uh, allies try to cap the center, and they decap it, but here comes some uh, coastal wizard artillery. And the riflemen just got to continue to move around the circle here. Ooh, that hurts. Uh, one more decent barrage is going to knock out a lot of these. Well, they do capture it. So the, the VP pressure is back on. The axe is at just 11 VPs. There's no way. Grens get on the south here, but Fokas are here to contest. MG42 moving into the middle. The Panther combined with that pack 40 is not to be messed with. How are they going to decap the center in time? One VP. They decapped the center with a single VP left. But this is. And now here you go, here you see a big blob coming in to challenge in the city, and the only thing to defend it are two pioneer squads and a Kettenkrod. <laughs> Fortunately, the Axe is countercapping in the south. AT gun, Panther, and Brumbear to counter two Matildas. So they decap in the south just in time uh, to get forced off in the north in the city here. Pioneers rapidly trying to uh, finish this bunker. They won't be able to finish it. So it looks like the Axis will hold on briefly, but here comes another push through the middle. And Barry Chuckle also has uh, the munitions for another infantry assault. God, he's got so much fuel. He doesn't even have a tank depot though, so he can't really do anything with it. Here it comes, rifles on the center point. And they're chasing this AT gun, but they really... Yeah, there you go. They stay on it. But they really need to do a good sprint, but they're off the VP. I think if they just managed to capture it... Well, here it comes. Here's the, uh, the zeroing artillery here. Oh, no. Not the riflemen retreating right into it. Oh, they get out in time. Yeah. Those Panzergrenadiers are going to run right through it, though. 
Oh, thank God that artillery rounds can uh, decide if they want to hurt friendly forces. <laughs> so the axe is going to survive here a little bit longer. Look at the resources war is floating. 400 munitions, 400 fuel. And he's only at 63 pop, so maybe he just needs to get another uh, Obiche out. All right, here comes the Reki artillery. Rolling deep. I'm not sure what happened. He had a grant, and I was trying to pay attention, but I don't see where it died at. I he never, may have refunded it. I never saw the grant. I just saw the two Matildas in the push up. He's floating a lot of manpower, though. I, at this point, I think they need to combine their, their pushes. They're, they're a little disjointed. Bishop knocks out the AT gun in the south. Eight rod counter capping in the north. There's a rifle squad in the church, but they're not gonna be able to do anything about it. All right, here comes the big push in the center, but now we've got uh, bunkers coming in. Oh, Martyr takes a bunch of good hits. Martyr goes down to the AT guns. The boys come in, but they're suppressed by an MG42. And then another bunker popping up here. So the Axis have the triple cap back on again. Oh, uh, here comes the bunker defense artillery. That hurts a lot more than the artillery wizard. Oh, Why would you just let your riflemen die? They're just all going to get evaporated here. Oh, God. Although it irritates me that the pioneers are able to just stand in it. Oh, Barry took a huge hit. He's down to 44 of population now. Rowling's got his grant out on the field. But yeah, I think at this point, the Allies, they've got some time. They've got 250 BPs that they can bleed out. I think they need to think about uh, kind of licking their wounds for a minute. Oh, the bishop gets hit by the Obiche and gets knocked out. Yeah, I think the allies need to make a concerted push. They're about to take the city here. So if they can get one good push in here on the center, they only need to hold the center VP for literally a tick. And this game is over. The are going to deer is closed with the rifles. Uh, but I think with the way this patches... Oh, that bundle... Yeah, the rifle at point blank are going to, especially triple that with dual BAR is going to do fairly well against p -grins. It's that range where they'll lose. And I wonder why they put in, they put an MG bunker in the middle, not an AT gun bunker. Sapper's about to get the cap off here. AT gun is diving into the circle to pause the cap. Oh my and they'll God. do it. Holy cow. <laughs> Oh, the Obicha clears an AT gun. Dude, that is insane. Those sappers were like a quarter second away from ending the game. This is insane. Oh my gosh. The Black Prince has been made and now a Black her. Prince on the field. Barry's been leaving. He's oh, had no, it's lost available. Multiple, multiple units just chilling up top. Uh, could be setting mines or doing something, but they've all just been sitting there. Yeah, especially like engineers, you're right. They should be they should be throwing mines everywhere to punish that aid rod for coming in. Yeah. I don't think I've seen him place any mine. I don't think I've seen either of the allied players place mines. Yeah, now we see an artillery fest coming in. The AT gun does knock out the MG bunker. The Obiche, if Ebitoda's not careful, that Obiche might kill it. Panther and P4 chip away at it. Oof. AT gun cleared by the Obiche third round coming in, but it'll miss. Rifles advanced, there's an MG42 there. And then artillery wizard coming in. Yep, the rifles forced to retreat. So it looks like the axes are pretty solid here in the south with the Brum Bear, a couple of NGs, and a triple fed AT gun. The eight rod's gonna capture the north. And so the triple cap is about to be back on. Black Prince has hit the field, so he's he's committed to that. He's going to refund, I think, one if not both of his Matildas. Oh, 
That's wild that he didn't even kill a model from the, the artillery wizard. There you go, there's one. Alright, here comes infantry assault push. Meanwhile, Panther and P4 on the flank here. They're gonna knock out this ammunition storage, but it doesn't really mean anything at this point. It goes up. AT gun chips away on the flank of the Panther. Good use of the MG42s to stall out this infantry push. Recon artillery coming in, but with a whirlwind and a flak 30, that recon plane's gonna get knocked down relatively quickly. Ooh, artillery wizard down to a single model. I guess that airplane's not gonna get knocked down as fast as I thought. Riflemen are gonna capture the uh, VP in the city for the allies. They snare the eight rod. Oh. More artillery coming in. Here comes the Black Prince with foot guards and AT guns. Now the defensive artillery called in by the uh, the bunker. Uh, that's extremely powerful. The Obiche as well. Foot guards forced to retreat. And not it doesn't matter anyway because this eight rod uh, decaps the north. Now big push from Barry Chuckle up here. He's got a lot of engineers. I really hope. Well, he's short of munitions. I was going to say, I hope he mines it up. There we go. Oh, oh. Two, oh there. there it is. Eight Rod finally knocked out by some BAR fire. Don't cover! Artillery stone! Is it load bearing? And now, now you're seeing these Pack 40 bunkers go up. Grant medium tank. So there's a Black Prince, a Matilda, and a Grant, but. Uh, the bunkers, the team artillery, um, and that, the Pac-40 bunkers, man, the range on them is nuts. Finally, from Barry Chuckle, you see the, uh, Tier 4 come out. He's got a couple of Hellcats. And here comes a big flank with these rifles. He has the ISC. I wonder if he got the demo charge upgrade. MG-42 turned to face, and actually now... This rifle platoon going to face a long, painful retreat. The captain's trying to cap up in the center as he gets forced away. Matilda in the south displaces the the pack forty. Harry chuckles says. 2v1, so I guess that answers the question about whether or not this is an arranged team. <laughs> Panther knocks out the Grant in the south. And Axis are going to get the triple cap back on here in the north. Uh, looks like the Matilda's rotating, but the, the Allies just couldn't get uh, a joint push together here in the center. Um, I think with, you know, they lost so much of this artillery here in the south and in the center. And that had to hurt their chances of hanging in here. Triple Vet Matilda, Triple Vet Panther bouncing shots. Panther penetrates. Matilda gets debuffed. The Black Prince comes over to help. Here comes the Axis. Well, uh, one Pioneer Squad goes down, the Rifleman going to take a bunch of damage from the Whirlwind and the P-Rens. We've 25 points left. The ground's medium tank. Big oh, we push. could see something in the middle. Yeah, but now that Bunker Artillery is coming in, and, uh, yeah, those Rifleman going to take a lot of damage, as well as the Wizard Artillery. Wow. Yeah. So, the artillery wizard is going to hold down the center, prevent the cap, and that's going to be it. Hey everyone, so first off, some of you may notice, I don't always cast the games uh, and finish the recording in one day. Sometimes it's kind of a multi-day process. So as a result, we recorded this game and the cast of it in the discussion, uh, and then Relic pushed a hotfix. So I can't really go back and look at the replay to get the exact build order uh, that I normally would want. So in this build order discussion, I'm going to talk more about general themes and approach rather than the specific build order from the various teams. So take this with a little bit of a grain of salt. So first off, as an axis, so Walrus playing the mechanized battle group. 
He starts with, with what I kind of describe as a, a balanced tier one into a meta tier three build, right? So Pioneer, Grenadier is MG42, gets his Panzer Grenadier headquarters out relatively early, uh, goes to the Panzer Grenadiers, gets an eight rod out from the mechanized battle group, a couple of pack 40s and Naval Warfare. And then in his late game, he's really just balancing Panthers, Brumbears, uh, and a Panzer IV. Meanwhile, his teammate War, who goes Coastal Defense Battle Group, uh, he starts with a lot of Pioneers at the beginning. Um, and the main thing that he gets from the Coastals early on is actually the Artillery Officer, which he uses really well throughout the game. From there, he uses uh, Tier 2 for his mid-game, so Flak 30, Warblewind, and he gets a Kettle Cry out late. And then his late game is actually characterized by his use of the Coastal Bunkers and the Obiche Artillery piece. On the Allied side, you have Rolling Nine Deep playing as a UK Armored Battle Group. He starts out with a relatively balanced opening, right? A Sapper, a Dingo, a Mortar, a Vickers, an Infantry Section, and a Humber, and an AT Gun. But you can tell he's playing for the late game because he pretty much skips straight to Tier 4. And this is where you see a couple of Foot Guards, a couple of Matildas, the Black Prince eventually, and then the Grant. And we'll kind of talk about the implications of that build later. Uh, it's actually really impressive that he's able to maintain the pressure, and the Allies are able to maintain the pressure that they are given how little he invests into the beginning of the game. And then for Barry Chuckle, playing as a U.S. Advanced Infantry Battle Group, he starts with a pretty standard rifle-heavy infantry support center opening, a scout, an engineer, three rifles. Um, and then his mid-game, he really focuses on artillery, right? So you see the mortar pit, you see the ammunition depots, you see a couple of AT guns, and then really uh, focuses on trying to get those howitzers down. This really re uh, delays his late game. So you see him get a couple of Hellcats out at the end, uh, but that ends up kind of messing with his late game um, kind of synergy with his teammate. So worth noting there. All right, that's it. That's the general overview of the build order. And with that, we'll grab Garrett uh, and get into the post-match. All right, we're back. Uh, so I got Garrett, aka Turtle War, with me. Uh, I don't know why I say that every time I say your name. I, would, <laughs> would you prefer like Turtle War, Turtle Man, Garrett? Uh, it's whatever you want to call me. I'm a man of many names. <laughs> well yeah uh, appreciate it so uh so we we're talking about some of the differences between the two teams here uh and obviously recognizing at the end right that the allied team was not a ranged team but um i think so we saw that lack of coordination manifest in a couple of different spots and one of which was the the way they targeted their artillery so i'll i'll pass it over to you and you talk about how you would kind of prioritize what the axis have over there yeah, they, they, uh, they, both teams played great. Uh, Ally started off really strong. And I, uh, Shark was saying, you know, he, he agrees with the, with the M2A1, getting the ammunition storage out there. Like, I think, I agree, that's all smart. But they, they just never seem to counter Artie together, that Obiche. Mm -hmm. And I get it, you want to, you want to go for the soft, squishy medical bunker and hope you get some, you know, low health units and knock them out. But, we saw what three howitzers get destroyed, two or three, mm -hmm. two ammunition storages, uh, countless units, a bishop. You yeah. got to counter Artie. I think that's the worst thing you can do in this game. People always ask, how do you, how do you beat a heavy mortar? How do you beat an Obiche? How do you beat a Nebel? Um, and I get it. I it frustrates me too. But it, the answer is always going to be counter artillery. Like you got to focus on it together. And I bet if when they had that bishop out and that M two A one howitzer. If that first barrage, they would have put it both on the Obiche before. I don't know if it was about one at that point. Uh, not that that changed its health at all, but that uh, probably would have knocked it out, and they didn't. Yeah, I, you have to think about like the long term value of the target, right? So the med bunker sounds juicy until you realize that for the Wehrmacht, the med bunker is not a retreat point. Right, it's not like the med tent for the American where if you hit it and you time it right, units are retreating there, there's no control. You get some like cheeky wipes or a lot of manpower bleed. Uh, for the Wehrmacht, it's, you know, it's a med bunker, it's got some utility, but nothing is tied to it. So that's kind of the first issue. The second is like that OBJ, especially once it vets, it gets the five shell barrages, and that thing hits so hard. Like you saw like an errant shell nuked a bishop. Yeah. Right? Like that is game-changing damage. And if you let that go unpunished or untouched uh, for an extended period of time, like the naval warfare is not as powerful. We saw like the scatter when it's at max range is not great. So yeah, you'll take some damage from it. Or if you have your AT guns move up, there's some damage there. But 
Yeah, I agree with you. The OBJ needs to be the number one target. Um, I actually liked the mortar pit up front before he got the howitzers. Uh, I think it, much faster rate of fire, really good against the team weapons. And if you micro it well, it does what it needs to. Um, so I think the the approach was sound. The execution was lacking. Uh, and then you really got to appreciate uh, Walrus using the zeroing artillery to great effect right? Like I'm using his Ket and Crod, using the Pegrants to make deep pushes to get line of sight, uh, and then dropping that mechanized, or the, uh, yeah, the, the zero artillery from the mechanized battle group. Um, he killed two howitzers and was able to force, uh, the canceled construction on the third, which I think in this game, if there's any damage during construction, even if you cancel, you don't get the resources back. So that's a, I mean, that's a big hit. It doesn't sound like a lot because both some players on both teams were floating, significant resources late in the game but especially for the u.s player right he didn't have a tank depot until we were 30 minutes in so uh that lack of resources that investment into those howitzers ultimately costs you um yeah and that and that was going to be i i think one of the really <laughs> big points that uh helped axis win one of their strengths was unit preservation i mean i'm looking at this end screen obviously this is you know the last second of the game so some units got wiped last second and some dives but there's you know each both walrus and war have four to five vet three units mm -hmm. uh rolling deep has one and barry chuckle has one and it's a captain <laughs> so they and we watched many times i think i groaned when he just wasted two rifleman squads that were like vet two and vet three i oh, I, I saw that a handful of times i in the the uh uh, was it Matilda? Sorry, yeah, yeah. he um, wasted or refunded some Matildas, which I I get that too. You want to get them out of there. It takes a long time to heal. Heal, but I I don't know. I think the the lack of unit preservation for the Allies really hurt them. Yeah, and and I I like the idea of going with the Grants, and I know I don't normally like to to criticize build order stuff here, but I think the decision making the Matildas are good uh, in kind of that like early late game. Uh, but I think if he had refunded them and gotten, if he had had two or three grants, right, that he could keep together as opposed to one grant, one black prince, one Matilda, a, a little pack of grants can actually deal with that, that defensive setup they had in the South, right? Oh, There's yeah. a pack 40 and a Brumbear. Okay. Well, the, a couple of grants are going to nuke that pack 40. The Brumbear is not going to do a lot of damage to them. The MG 42s, they can just ignore and the panther rotates over and again it's outgunned um and then the black prince like it feels great to have like that late game tank but i think you either need to get the black prince out while you're still trying to hold the vp advantage or you need to wait until uh like it's much better as a defensive weapon because of its ability to like soak up damage and still deal it out uh and so i think like it it really loses its utility in the late game when you're trying to just cap a vp because it's not doing anything for you it fires so slowly it moves so slowly uh and as soon as you they started setting up those pack 40 bunkers in the middle all it's going to do is take a couple of shots and have to back up or risk getting destroyed yeah it becomes almost a chore at that point which i think is what happened with rolling deep he it was a chore to move his uh churchill around and back and forth and try to heal it and that's kind of a, it's like, it's, it's a little bit of a trap. Yeah. I remember having this conversation with Alpenwell, uh, God, it was probably a month ago, right? But he's, so he had, he was playing his DAC and he had like three or four pins or threes out. And I was like, Hey man, like you had a fuel advantage, you had the resources. Why not go for a tiger? He's like, well, I was behind and a tiger is not useful when you're behind. Um, you know, it's it's so slow, it gets outmaneuvered. If it gets uh, picked on, like a pack of Hellcats come by, it gets knocked down really quickly. But a bunch of P3s move around the map. They can respond. They can um, kind of outmaneuver your opponent. And together, they can volley some damage. So he's like, so I would rather have a pack of medium vehicles than one heavy. And I think, so you just kind of saw that play out here uh, with the Black Prince. Um, On to the, the Axis players. So what I really liked was the way that they used their battle group abilities into the late game to keep them in it. So for the mechanized battle group for Walrus, 
using the the eight rods to cap or contest uh capping points using the zeroing artillery which i'm used to actually people choosing mechanized assault because i'm used to watching mechanizing 1v1s right and it has a lot of value but i think the zeroing artillery when your opponents are trying to build a lot of uh you know howitzers mortar pits uh ends up being a really great choice um and then on the side of the coastals on on war side and it looked initially like he really didn't want to play the, the cancer approach but man that like bunker defensive artillery uh literally saved him several times on that center vp the artillery wizard uh doing a good job as well to kind of displace team weapons uh and then the obiche obviously was a uh, uh, you know turn the tide for him um anything else kind of uh from the axis side that you thought was really kind of notable or interesting this game I think uh, kind of the flip of what we talked about earlier at the start of this was that their targeting for their artillery for the Nebel and the Obiche was that of counter artillery. It, mm. it felt like they they kept firing on the ammunition storage. I mean, I think the first thing they knocked out was the mortar pit. Mm -hmm. Then they moved to the ammo storage. Then they moved to the howitzer once that popped up. Mm -hmm. Then the next howitzer. And yeah, they were throwing everything on it from the uh, from the barrages to the zeroing artillery. Yeah. No, and it, and it makes sense, right? Like, what's the biggest threat, especially to your Wehrmacht team weapons? When you don't have a player as the DAC, you, you have, instead of a hammer and anvil approach, you have two anvils, right? And so, uh, yeah, that artillery is the biggest threat. And so kind of good on them to recognize it. Uh, I think, you know, if I was going to critique them at all, uh, I'd say, like, in the early game, not prioritizing that fuel... And I think they showed just a little too much patience, letting themselves get run down to a single VP. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like sometimes that patience is good, right? Because if you get too aggressive, you get caught out of position and then you uh, retreat your units, you commit a piecemeal and you're just never going to win an engagement again. But too much patience, uh, especially in, in Co3, the tick rate's a lot faster. Uh, and so you start to see kind of the, the downsides of that. Yeah. Um, anything else that you got before we wrap this one up? Uh, would have loved to see more mines in the city. I think that's, that's my, you're speaking that's my, my language. Yeah. Yeah. That, so right. That's everything <laughs> I, I preach on this map is the city is a trap. Ignore it. Just throw mines up there and leave it alone. Go focus on the middle. Yeah. I, you know, I hate to pick on anyone in particular. I think it was, uh, Barry, um, he had his two, they, they capped the city. He had his two engineer squads up there. Um, and it's tough, right? You're trying to manage engagements across the map. Um, it's not an easy thing to do. But yeah, a couple of mines, you know, a couple of well-placed mines thrown down up there. Hell, get the uh, get the ISC upgrades. You can throw down the like M6, like anti-tank mines. And then the next time that 8RAD comes up there to try to mess with your uh, VP, it just gets nuked. Uh, and, you know, that could be a potentially game-changing moment because um, it gives you some flexibility. So yeah, I, I agree with you there. Well, um, Garrett, Turtle War, I, I really appreciate you uh, casting this with me. This was fun. Yeah, thanks for having me on. That was a great, that was a great match. Yeah. Uh, guys, thanks for sending it in. Great play on both sides. Uh, anytime it comes down to a single VP, you know it's a good match. Um, and that's going to be it for us here. Uh, we'll see you all in the next one.